Hey guys, welcome to another audiobook. This is The New Kid, uh, and it's the third story in the third Fazbear Frights book, 1.35am. I have yet to read it, so you're going to hear my reactions during the story. Uh, I have nothing to spoil or anything, we're just going to go through it together um, and, and see how it goes. The words are on the screen, obviously. And I think we should just get started with it, because uh, I don't want to spend too much time just blabbering on about nothing at the start. <laughs> so let's begin. I have no idea what this is going to be about, by the way. I've, I haven't heard anything. It's a bright, sunny day. The kind of day that makes you feel like you have to do something. You have to do something fun, or you have to be productive. Devin used his left, I left index and middle fingers to make air quotes, trusting no one would notice his bitten down nails. Then, he continued in what he hoped was an ominous tone. It's the kind of day when your mum makes you mow the lawn. But today isn't a mowing day. Today is a birthday party day. Devon heard rustling in the classroom. Someone snickered, but he didn't look up from his papers. He kept his head bent, his long hair hanging like a product protective shield between him and the class. Normally. He hated having to stand in front of the class, for any reason, but today he was on a mission. If he had to read a stupid assignment for English class, he was going to make it work for him. Devon continued his story, describing the birthday party scene for a pack of screaming four-year-olds. He read about the balloons and the clowns and the bright coloured bounce house set up in the middle of the green lawn. But this isn't any ordinary bounce house. Devon read. No one knows that yet, but they're going to find out. Now. Devon paused for effect. He didn't hear anything. For all he knew, his teacher, Mrs. Patterson, and his classmates had disappeared. But he wasn't going to look up to see. Devon went on, because now little Hallie is crawling into the bounce lounge, into the bounce house. She's the first one in. Her twin sister, Hope, is right behind her. Was that a gasp Devon heard from the third row of desk? He thought it was. Good. He had her attention. He grinned as he kept reading. Hallie makes it almost all the way into the bounce house, her bright pink dress clashing with the house's puffy red vinyl door. Father, Hope urges Hallie, pushing Hallie's butt. Hallie still crawls slowly, until suddenly she's stuck inside the bounce house. Hope giggles and follows her. Devon stopped reading again. He was going to get the good part. But in a second, Hope is going to wish she didn't follow her sister. In just a second, she's looking down at the, as she crawls inside, but now she's in. She looks up and she sees her sister's partially eaten body lying still on the red vinyl. No, wait, the vinyl isn't red. It's covered in blood. Was that a squeal Devon just heard? He kept reading. And the house isn't a house. It's a big mouth. And the mouth is chewing. And now it's opening wider. And Hope, now screaming, is sliding into... That's enough! Mrs. Patterson shouted. Devon blinked. He didn't look up. He wasn't finished. Devon Blaine Marks. Mrs. Patterson spurted every one of Devon's three names like each was a spitball. Before he could respond, Mrs. Patterson's large square hand appeared in front of Devon's downward aimed gaze and snatched the story from his grasp. The pages rattled and he felt the sting of a paper cut on the web of skin between his thumb and his index finger. The classroom was so silent, Devon could hear a bird chirping outside the window. He finally looked up at Mrs. Patterson. What? What? Mrs. Patterson shook her head, sending her blonde ponytail into a wild dance. Mrs. Patterson was an English teacher, but she was also the girls' basketball coach. She was a huge woman, tall and broad in her shoulders. She towered over Devon, and Devon was already five foot nine, tall for his age. If only he were coordinated enough to be a basketball player, maybe then he'd be a part of Devon. Mrs. Patterson softened her deep voice, and Devon finally raised his gaze to look at her 
wide face. He even managed to meet her intense blue eyes. Mrs. Patterson's eyes were scary, everyone in the class thought so. She could reduce you to a pile of smoke and ashes with just a look. Devon was happy he was still standing. Report to Mr. Wright's office, Mrs. Patterson ordered. Devon looked at his story, crumpled in Mrs. Patterson's hand. He wanted to argue, but he shrugged and headed toward the classroom door. Heather sat in the second seat from the door, in the third row. As he passed that row, he met her gaze. Had it worked? Heather was looking right at him. Looking right at him? Yes! Heather Anders, one of the most popular girls in his class and by far the prettiest, had never, not one single time, ever looked at Devon. As far as Heather and pretty much all of their ninth grade class was concerned, Devon didn't exist, or if she had noticed he existed, he was nothing more than part of the scenery, like a blackboard or a chair. If it wasn't for Devon's best and only friend Mick and his well-meaning but very enjoying, uh, enjoying, annoying mum, Devon would wonder if he did, in fact, exist. Sometimes he wasn't so sure, but today he existed and Heather saw him. Triumphant, he grinned at her and gave her a thumbs up as he sauntered down the classroom door. Heather rolled her eyes and said, Jeez, Devon, that was sick. Devon grinned wider and stood tall as he nodded at her and then strode out of the classroom like he was heading to an important meeting instead of to the principal's office. He'd done it. Even though Heather never noticed Devon, he'd made a careful study of Heather. He watched her, he listened to her, he wanted to know everything about her. The previous week, while Mick was going on about his latest superhero obsession, Devon was listening to Heather talk to her girlfriends. She was complaining about her four-year-old twin sisters, Hallie and Hope. They drive me crazy, she told Valerie, her best friend. I mean seriously bonkers. I'm having to babysit them, and I hate it. They're always getting into trouble, breaking something or whatever, and then I get in trouble. I hate them. That same day, Mrs. Patterson handed out the assignment to write an original short story. That's when Devon saw his chance. He saw it, he took it, and he'd made the most of it. Who cared if it cost him a trip to the principal's office? The best creative artist had hidden depths lurking beneath the surface, and usually those depths were misunderstood. This guy seems to go <laughs> quite far to get some attention, gosh. Devon and Mick met up after school at their regular spot in the back, at the edge of the teacher's parking lot. Devon couldn't wait to talk to Mick about what had happened with Heather. He hadn't thought to look at Mick before he left English class. He wasn't sure his friend saw what happened. Mick tended to daydream. He was often caught staring out the school windows at who knew what. When Devon reached Mick, Mick was juggling his bright purple backpack, a paper mache tiger, a plastic go cup with a curl with a straw, a stack of books that obviously wouldn't fit in the overstuffed backpack, and a half-eaten package of chocolate cupcakes. White frosting from the missing cupcake was stuck to his lower lip. Devon pointed at the frosting. Huh? What? Oh. Mike wiped at his mouth with the back of his hand holding the tiger. It made him look like he was being mauled. It also made him drop the stack of books, which smacked the ground and scattered. Devon shook his head and bent over to pick them up. He stuck them in his own navy blue backpack, which was nearly empty. He'd already done his homework for the day while he was hanging out in Mr. Wright's office, and unlike Mick, Devon never read a book, so he wasn't required to read. Sorry. Oh, you got those? Mick asked. Thanks. Mick squinted at Devon through his round wire-rimmed glasses. He shoved his reddish blonde bangs off his freckled forehead. They ended up sticking straight up. Where's your art project? I dumped it in the trash. Why? That four-headed octopus was gnarly. Devon shrugged. He didn't tell Mick that he thought making paper mache animals was for kids, and that the art teacher, Mr. Sh Steward, had given Devon a D on the project and a lecture on following instructions instead of doing whatever he wanted. These were supposed to be 
representations of real animals, Mr. Marks, Mr. Stewart had said. How do you know there aren't any four-headed octopuses? Devon had responded. Only 5% of the ocean floor has been explored. That had shut Mr. Stewart up. Devon didn't like reading books, but that didn't mean he didn't read. He spent most of his spare time on the internet. Mick stuffed the second cupcake in his mouth. As the boy started walking away from the school, Mick took a noisy slurp through his straw. That was a skeevy short story, Dev. Kane kind of made me throw up in my mouth. Gosh, this is hard to read. Devon gave Mick a gentle shove. Gross. No grosser than your story. Whatever. Do you see what Heather said, though? She was, like, really white. Her face, I mean. I thought she was going to faint. Yeah, but did you see her look at me? Mick glanced at Devon, who bent down to pick up a round stone. He flung it at a stop sign, and it hit him in the middle of the O with a resounding metallic clink. Um, I saw her look at you like she wanted to kill you. Nah, didn't you hear what she said? Mick adjusted his backpack. Yep, she said the story was sick. No, she said it was sick as in cool. Mick screwed up around his face. Um, I don't think so. Devon shrugged again, picked up another rock, and fired it at a lamppost. He got a resonant bong as a reward. The point is that she noticed me. She talked to me. Mick twisted his small mouth. That's something. It sure is. The boys had reached the railroad yard that was half a mile from their school. They began weaving through the stationery, graffiti-coloured boxcars. The railway yard smelled like oil and that, and it was filled with the sounds of train wheels clunking lethargically over dirty old rails. At the far side of the yard, the boys ducked into the woods that stretched for miles to the north beyond the railroad yard and from several miles east of the yard to the back of their neighbourhood to the west. The woods were thick with huge fir and hemlock trees that stood so closely together in places that they blocked out the sun, creating perpetual dusk. On a cloudy day, the forest was even darker, like it was one big shadow engulfing and muting the too loud, too bright, too busy craziness that most people called real life. Devon loved the darkness, and on a sunny day like today, it was a relief to duck into the trees and leave the blazing light behind. Halfway from the railroad yard to the neighbourhood, if they stayed near the edge of the woods, they'd reach their clubhouse, the hangout they had set up in an old abandoned gas station that backed into the woods. For the six years that they'd been friends, they'd nearly spent every afternoon after school and much of every weekend in their clubhouse. If Devon was honest, which he wasn't, he thought they were going to get a little too old to have a clubhouse. It was fine when they were in grade school and maybe even last year in middle school, but now that they were nearly at the end of their freshman year, it was too little kid for them. Devon had outgrown their pretend games of pirates and space cowboys, and he no longer saw the collection of junk they'd amassed over the years as treasures. He didn't want to be one of two boys who had no place to go after school other than a tumbling down empty gas station. But that didn't mean he had a problem with their clubhouse. It might not be little kid fun for him anymore, but it was a place to get away from all of the crap of real life. It was a place he could go and forget about school and forget about all of the pressure his mum was always putting on him to be somebody. Don't end up like me, Devon. Be somebody, she told him over and over and over. Don't you think? Mick asked. What? How long had he been walking along and not listening to his friend? Devon had no idea what he'd missed, but he figured it probably wasn't important. Mick's latest favourite subject of conversation was the digital math game he was working on. It's going to be like playing spy, like with ciphers, Mick had explained to Devon. Mick and Devon mostly got B's and C's, peppered with the occasional D at school. That wasn't, however, because they were stupid. They weren't. Devon just never cared enough about school to apply himself, his mother's words. School bored him. Why work hard at it? Mick's problems was a little more serious. He had some learning disorders. Devon really didn't understand and he tended to have attention issues. We're not going to label the boy, Mick's father said, according to Mick. So Mick had never been treated for anything. 
Basically, as far as Devon could tell, Mick was a like a savant who couldn't figure out how to play a school game. And Mick didn't care about the school game. He was in love with food, the reason for his soft, slightly pudgy form, and fantasy worlds of any kind. Mick was an overgrown kid, almost as tall as Devon. Mick's high-waisted pants and button-down <laughs> short sleeve shirts screamed nerd, but it didn't seem to bother him. Devon figured someday Mick would probably own a gaming company and be a zillionaire. Devon! Mick yanked on Devon's t-shirt sleeve. What? Mick blinked and looked around. They should be at the clubhouse by now. Yep, there was the old tree with the split trunk. So, where was the gas station? It's gone, Mick said in a very small voice. He was right. The gas station was no longer there. In its place, a hulking yellow backhoe sat idle next to a mass of debris like a dragon waiting to spew fire at its defeated foe. Mick plopped down on a fallen log. But, he blinked and sniffled. Our treasures. Devon, who was feeling strangely thrilled by the demolished clubhouse, looked down at his friend. Mick's large, brown eyes were moist. He rubbed his nose. Devon took a seat next to Mick and threw an arm around his shoulders. Hey, it's okay. But it's not. Look. Yeah, I'm looking. All our treasures, Mick repeated. Yeah, but we can find more. Not that Devon wanted to, but Mick didn't need to know that. But we have no clubhouse now. Devon gave Mick a half hug. Glad no one could see them. I'll find us something. You think so? Sure. And in the meantime, we have the forest. He waved an arm behind them. Well, yeah, that'll work on days like today, but leave it to me, Devon said. For now, let's just hang out here. No matter what, we're in it together, right? He held out his right index finger. Mick grinned and nodded. In it together. He extended his right index finger and linked it with Devon's. They both pulled hard and then released. Devon shrugged out of his backpack and unzipped the outer pocket. I saved the chocolate chip cookie for my lunch. It's yours if you want it. Mick brightened. Really? Far out. Devon inwardly rolled his eyes. He was used to Mick's habit of using out of date or even made up slang. But that didn't mean he always liked it. While Mick munched on the cookie, Devon said, I think today's a big day. Maybe that, he waved at the pile of destroyed gas station, is a sign that something new is coming. Something big. I mean, after all, Heather talked to me today. All I have to do now is build on that and figure out other ways to get her attention. Mick stopped chewing. He brushed cookie crumbs off his chin. Um, I'm not sure getting her attention is necessarily a good thing. There are different kinds of attention, right? Devon shrugged. Whatever. Devon was happy with how his plan unfolded today. He wasn't going to let Mick talk him off his high. Hey, he said. Why don't we go poke around that pile and see if we can find some of our stuff? Mick, who had finished the cookie, grinned. I, I honestly can't tell where this is going. Um, I feel like they're going to find this abandoned, like, Friday Fazbear's Pizza or something. And then say, this is our clubhouse now. And then it gets haunted or something. Don't know. we, we got to see where this goes. I, I suspect it will be... Um, like a slow start for this one as well, like all the others, um, but that's fine. Mrs. Patterson seemed to be bearing a grudge about Devon's story. Instead of ignoring him like normal, she glared at him as he took his unusual, his usual place in the back of the room next to Mick. Heather wasn't here yet. As soon as Devon sat down, Mick leaned over and poked him in the arm. Hey Dev, do you need to meet Kelsey? Mick leaned back and pointed at the new kid sitting on Mick's left. Kelsey, this is Devon. Dev, this is Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey said. He flashed Devon what looked like a genuine, friendly smile. Really? Devon had spotted Kelsey earlier that morning. He'd been ha hanging out near the stairs watching the other kids. Both then and now, Devon thought Kelsey didn't look like the kind of kid who would be friendly with Mick and Devon. Although Devon didn't dress with nerdy abandon like Mick did, he in no way resembled a normal kid. Too skinny for his height, Devon knew he had a lot of things working against him. His teeth were super crooked, and his mum couldn't afford to get him braces. 
His ears were too big. Even though he wore his dark hair long and as messy as possible, the ears still wanted to stick out. His neck was too long, and his dark eyes were way too small and way too close together. When he was in grade school, one of the school bullies called him Birdman. His mum liked to say that he was a dormant swan. Yeah, whatever. But here was this new kid, this very good looking, Devin knew what girls looked at for in boys, new kid, smiling at Devin as if Devon was someone worth smiling at. Devon had seen Kelsey smile at lots of kids the same way when he was on the stairs. Kelsey's smile made Devon feel ridiculously good. Kelsey just moved here, Mick said. Devon resisted the urge to say, Duh. His dad's a contractor, Mick continued. He's here to uh, head up that hotel or office complex my uh, dad bid on and didn't get. His grin and bright eyes made it clear he didn't intend any spite in these words. Even so, Devon noticed Kelsey's smile faltered for a second. Devon had no idea what to say to that, so he just said okay. It was bad enough that Mick had just mentioned his often out of work dad, who liked to grouse about how other electricians were always outbidding him. But Devon hoped this conversation wasn't going to end with him uh, having to say what his mum did. She was a house cleaner. She didn't even have her own house cleaning business. She worked for someone else. She barely made enough money for them to live on, but she seemed to think that she w that he should be proud that they were making it. He wasn't. I invited Kelsey to sit with us at lunch, Mick said. Sure, Devon said. Not at all sure Kelsey would actually want to sit with them. Kelsey grinned. I appreciate the invite. Devon raised an, uh, an eyebrow and scanned Kelsey's wa wavy blonde hair, blue eyes, straight teeth, broad shoulders, cool ripped jeans, and faded black t-shirt. Sure, he repeated. The disjointed, the disjoint, oh my god, the disjointed sound <laughs> of multiple conversations, the swish of clothes, the scraping of chairs, and the thudding of books on desks let Devon know the classroom was filling up. He got a whiff of Heather's lemony scent, and he swiveled in his seat to stare at the sleek shine of her straight auburn hair. She was wearing a dark green shirt that went great with her hair. Okay, seize the chaos, Mrs. Patterson said. Let's begin. To Devon's shock, Kelsey did actually sit with Mick and him during lunch. It was another bright day, and everyone was outside either clustered at the picnic table set up near the entrance to the cafeteria, or lounging on the grass that stretched from the walkway in front of the school to the parking lot. Devon and Mick leaned against the base of the stone wall surrounding the flag posts. The stone was rough but warm. Devon was looking for Heather and Mick was going on about how delicious peanut butter and honey sandwiches were when Kelsey strolled over and dropped to a cross-legged position in front of them. Devon glanced up and around them to see if anyone else was looking at this shocking social development. Several people were. A couple of the jocks called out Hey Kelsey, as they strutted past. Kelsey smiled at them. Hey Kurt, hey Brian. He also waved at a group of girls at the closest picnic table and they waved back. Then he turned his attention to Mick and Devon. I hear the food sucks here, so I brought my own lunch, he said. Mick waved his, around his delicious sandwich and said in peanut butter mush's mouth, Ish the best chosh. Kelsey laughed. He actually laughed, not like as if he was laughing at Mick, but like he thought Mick was amusing. He opened a crumpled brown paper bag. I like good old chicken salad, he said. My mum makes great chicken salad, he gestured at Devon's sack. What do you have? Devon shrugged. I'm not actually hungry. He pushed his sack down into his backpack. The truth was, he had that on white bread. Sorry, I don't owe some of these words. <laughs> You'll have to uh, forgive me. His mum brought both in bulk, and he hated both. He hated the taste, and he hated that they reminded him of grade school when he thought um, it was the best thing in the world. He'd outgrown the food, but their budget hadn't kept up with his taste buds. Kelsey bit into his sandwich and looked around. I like it here. I like the sun. See, Dev? Normal people like the sun, Mick nudged Devon with a foot and said to Kelsey, 
Dev likes clouds. If I didn't know better, I'd think he was a vampire. Kelsey tilted his head and studied at Devon for a couple of seconds. For those two seconds, Devon had the weird feeling he was being evaluated. But then Kelsey laughed and leaned toward Devon. Well, he doesn't sparkle in the sun like those movie vampires. He laughed again. Probably not a vampire, Devon said in a creepy vampire accent. I don't want to suck your blood. <laughs> hey, Kelsey, a girl's bell-like voice called out. Devon sat straight up. It was Heather. Hi, Heather, Kelsey said. You find that book I was telling you about? She stood a few feet up from them and beamed down at Kelsey. I did. I'm going to start it tonight. She flicked a glance at Mick and Devon. Oh, hi, Devon. The tone of De Heather's voice when she said hi to Devon was totally different than the one she used for Kelsey. Devon noticed that, of course. Part of his brain told him that the sharp and heavy tones on each syllable of his name represented sarcasm. Part of his brain didn't care. It only cared that she said hi to him. Hi, Heather. She wrinkled her nose at him, flashed a big smile at Kelsey, and walked away. Pretty girl, Kelsey said softly after Heather had moved off. He watched her for a few seconds, then scanned the rest of the students, his gaze resting now and then on someone before moving on. Yeah, Mick said. Devon thinks, yes, she is, Devon interrupted. He turned up, sorry, he turned and gave Mick a look that clearly said, shut up. Mick was sharp enough to quietly return to his sandwich. Kelsey started talking about the experiment they'd done in science class and Devon tuned out. He watched Heather talking animatedly with her friends while he left. He half listened to Kelsey and Mick discuss chemical reagents. reagents. <laughs> was this what it was like to actually fit in? Maybe not quite, but it was closer than he'd gotten in years. Devon pretty much floated through the rest of the day. He hadn't felt this good in a very long time. He even raised his hand once in math and answered a question correctly. Mr. Crenshaw's mouth dropped open. On his, way, on his way through school to meet Mick after his last class, Devon passed Heather and her friends loitering by the lockers. Heather stood with her back to the hallway. Her friends formed a semicircle in front of her. There was Valerie and Juliet, along with her third BFF, Gabriella. Gabriella's boyfriend, Quincy, also stood nearby. For some reason, Devon didn't understand. Quincy always seemed to be hanging out with the three girls. I've decided I'm not. I'm going to make my own movies, Heather flung her hair back over her shoulder. I don't want to be an actress, I don't want to- I want to be behind the camera. Devon didn't think. He just stopped next to Heather and started talking. Ignoring Heather's friends, he pushed in sideways in front of Heather and said, If you're gonna make movies, you should do horror movies. Even campy horror movies that can get good followings. Heather took a step back and looked Devon up and down. He kept talking. If you decide to do a horror movie, let me know. I have a cousin who has clown makeup and costumes. You could do a creepy clown story. Heather tapped a red nailed index finger against Devon's chest, empathizing each word with what could have been scorn. But maybe not, she pronounced. You are unoriginal. That's been done, done, done. She turned and flounced off. Her friends followed, but not before Valerie, her blonde curls bouncing as she shook her head at Devon, said, You are very weird. Devon watched them walk away as he rubbed the spot Heather touched. She touched him. As Mick and Devon headed from school, Mick waited for Devon to walk about his search for a new clubhouse. But Devon didn't talk about that. She actually touched me, Devon was saying. He'd just finished telling Mick how he'd like how he'd, how he'd oh my god how he talked to Heather in the hall. It sounded to Mick like Devon had made himself look like a total doofus, but Devon didn't see it that way. Devon actually thought Heather's comment and her fingertip to the chest were worth getting excited about. Mick was a little worried about Devon. It seemed like he was getting just a bit delusional. It wasn't that Mick thought Devon didn't deserve to get Heather's attention. Sure he did. Mick's parents had taught him that looks don't mean anything and everyone is equally deserving of love and other good stuff. Mick had to admit he wasn't really sure the world worked that way. He hadn't seen evidence of this attitude in school, for sure, but he trusted his parents. A bee buzzed past Mick's nose, and he jumped back and waved his go cup in front of his face. The liquid incised sloshed around. 
He watched Devon throw a rock at the coupling on the end of one of the boxcars. He hit it dead on. But he was missing a big time with his conclusions about Heather. Devon's la latest controversial attempt was a swing and a very, very big miss. Mick grinned. His dad would be proud of the sports metaphor. Mick hadn't liked sports when he was younger, but lately he'd be getting into baseball, which his dad loved. Mick liked the stats. As Mick and Devon ducked into the woods, Mick said, Uh, Dev, what's going on with looking for a new clubhouse? Huh? Devon had been talking about Heather's hair. He blinked and looked at Mick. A new clubhouse? Mick repeated. Oh, right, I'm still looking for something good, but in the meantime, I stashed a blanket, a tarp, and some ropes in the woods early this morning. I thought we'd build a fort and make it our camp. Mick grinned. Badonk donk, that's the boss. What? <laughs> Mick noticed Devon's sigh. He knew Devon didn't like his expressions, but he didn't care. They made Mick happy, and Mick liked to do whatever he could do to be happy. He was pretty sure Devon thought Mick didn't care about fitting in at school, but Mick did care. He cared so much, it actually hurt him to think about how much everyone ignored them both. But the alternative, putting themselves out there and being rejected, was decidedly something Mick didn't want. He and Devon both used to deal with it the same way, by ignoring everyone else and doing their own thing. Now Devon seemed to want to try to fit in, while Mick still wanted to try to stay in his fantasy world. The fantasy world felt good, the real world definitely did not. A few minutes later they reached a small stand of hemlocks sheltering a couple of boulders. Devon went to one of the boulders and pulled out a blanket, a tarp and some rope. Between the two of them they managed to string up the tarp to form a lopsided and sagging roof and they spread the blanket on the ground between the boulders. So let's brainstorm, Dev said when they settled and Mick had offered him a barbecue potato chip from the bag he bought from the vending machine after school. Every day, his mum gave him money to get some kind of junk food from that machine. It was his reward for getting through another day. Some days he got something sugary, and when he did, he usually ate it immediately. Some days he got something salty, and he usually said, saved that to share with Devon. About the clubhouse? Mick asked. Is that what we're brainstorming? Devon clenched a chip and said, What? No, about Heather and how I can get with her more. Um, dude, I'm still not sure you're getting in with her yet. Devon ignored Mick. I need to find a way to impress her, he said. That's never a good idea, Mick said. What isn't? Doing something to impress someone. My mum says that when boys make stupid mistakes. Devon flicked a rock at a fern growing at the base of one of the trees holding up their trap. Sorry, tarp. Well... Who cares what your mum says? Um, I do? Well, you shouldn't. How about we talk about the hike we're going on to do Saturday? <laughs> Mick asked. Dad says if we go a couple of miles farther north than we, can, than we normally go, we'll find a pretty jiggy waterfall. Maybe we should scout out locations for her movies, Devin said. I could give her a list of good locations. That should make her happy. Apparently there's some kind of rare plant that grows next to the waterfall, Mick tried again. It would be cool beans to find it. Why would Heather want beans, Devon said. Mick laughed, but then he realised Devon was serious. He hadn't been listening to anything Mick said, Mick sighed. It was like Devon had been put under a witch's spell. Mick wondered how he could break it. To Devon's amazement, Kelsey met Devon and Mick for lunch again the next day. He even brought his new friends chicken salad sandwiches. I thought you'd like to try them, Kelsey said. Mum makes her own bread too, it's pretty awesome. Today the weather was more to Devon's liking. So many cloud tufts clustered overhead, they blocked out most of the sun. Hey, Kelsey said, jerking his thumb toward the sky. Your kind of weather. He remembered what? Devon smiled. Yeah. Devon had watched Kelsey in the two classes they shared. It seemed like Kelsey was making friends with every kid in the class. How did he do that? Was it just because he was good looking? Was it the clothes? Today he wore baggy black pants with a grey t-shirt. He had a black and red plaid shirt tied at his waist. Devon had never cared about clothes enough to know what was right and what was wrong to wear. There was no reason to care. His mum could afford to get him two pairs of jeans and a bunch of t-shirts every year. 
that limited his fashion choices. So, do you know about all the cloud types? Kelsey asked. We learnt them in school last year, and the only one I can remember is Stratus. What are those? He gestured overhead. Cumulus, Devon said without thinking. Maybe that was it. Kelsey talked to you like he actually cared about what you were into. Did he really care, or was it an act? Devon narrowed his eyes and studied Kelsey as Kelsey asked Mick about Mick's superhero watch. I saw that latest movie, Kelsey said. It was dope. Kelsey was starting to get on Devon's nerves. Wait a minute. What? Why? Devon frowned. Why was Kelsey bugging him? He should be glad the new kid was hanging with them. He was glad, but he was annoyed too. It just came so easily to Kelsey. Too easily. It wasn't fair. Devon snorted. Mick and Kelsey looked at him. What? Devon said. I mean, Mick said. Oh, sorry, just had a stupid thought, not important. Kelsey cocked his head and looked at Devon so hard it felt like Kelsey was looking into his soul. Then Kelsey grinned and nodded as if he understood exactly. But how could he? Don't you just hate it when your brain goes and comes up with stupid thoughts? Mine does that all the time, he said. It's like it has a mind of its own, he laughed. Mick laughed too. Brain has a mind of its own, that's a good one. Devon forced a chuckle. Yeah, <laughs> he'd actually been laughing at himself because he sounded like a baby when he thought it wasn't fair. As if, by now, he of all people should know life wasn't fair. What do you guys do after school? Kelsey asked. I've been looking into what's available and haven't decided to get to what to get into yet. Devon didn't want to answer that question. He and Mick weren't involved in any sports or clubs, except their club of two. They had nothing. Mick wasn't intimidated by the question. With naive honesty, he said, We had the clubhouse, this really cool hangout in an abandoned gas station, but they tore it down. Dev says he's going to look for a new place for us. Kelsey finished his sandwich and wiped his mouth with a black napkin. Who used black napkins? A hangout? He leaned forward. Well, you know, my best places for hangouts are abandoned buildings. My friends and I at last school um, really got into urban exploring. We found some cool spots. When I learnt I was coming here, I asked one of my buddies to let me know if there's anything around here worth checking out. He's looking into it. Cool, Mick said. But until then, I can still help with the hangout thing. You can? Mick finished his sandwich too, but didn't wipe the chicken salad smeared on his cheek. Kelsey pointed at it, and without making fun, he said, You got a little smudge there. Oh, thanks. Mick wiped his face with the, black, with the back of his hand. Kelsey smiled. My parents bought this huge old farmhouse right outside of town. Mum says it's historical or something. I don't care about that, but I do like that there's this big old workshop behind the house. It's a mess, like sagging and starting to fall apart, and it needs paint and a new roof and stuff. Dad's building a home office and shop on the other side of the house, so he said I could have the workshop for a hangout place for parties and whatever if I fix it up. Wanna help me? Dad said he'd buy all the supplies. I just have to do all the work. He's taught me so I know how to build things, but it's more friend with friends. We could redo the workshop and make it our hangout. Did he really just say it's more fun with friends? Devon was tempted to stab Kelsey and see if he was a robot. Kids didn't just say things like that. Mick didn't seem to have a problem with it. He was practically bouncing. That's the bee's knees, Kelsey laughed. laughed. Glad you think so. <laughs> he grinned at Devon. How about you? Knees, Devon said as dryly as possible, but he smiled. That does sound pretty great. And it did. Even though he resented how easily Kelsey was sliding into their class, he had to admit that it would be awesome if being friends with Kelsey got them a ticket to the inner circle. If they helped build the hangout and Kelsey had parties, they'd be invited. Great, Kelsey said. He pulled out his phone and sent a text. There's this old guy, George, a neighbour I've made friends with. I just texted him to see if he can take us to the building supply store after school tomorrow. He told me he could drive me whenever I needed it. A couple seconds later, Kelsey's phone played in a guitar riff. He glanced at it. Yep, he's in. He glanced at his watch and stood. Mick and Devon stood too. It was time to get to class. Meet us tomorrow after school by the flagpoles, Kelsey said. Dad has a big dually pickup truck with an extra cab. Plenty of room for us all. It's bright red, 
You won't be able to miss it. Capital, my man, Mick said in a fake British accent. Cassie laughed and offered Mick a fist to bump. Jolly good, he played along. He offered his fist to Devon too. Devon bumped it and said, See ya, as they went into the school. He noticed and ignored the flutter in his belly as he got his books from his locker. He was excited about Kelsey's offer, but he wasn't sure if it was a good idea to get too revved up about it. Life had a way of disappointing him. Maybe things were going to turn around though. As Heather swished past him and gave him a chilly stare, he let himself believe in the possibility of change. Mick was so hyped up he could barely sit still. He hadn't been able to sleep the night before because he was too excited about helping Kelsey build a new clubhouse. Or, okay, hang out. Clubhouse, hang out, whatever. His mum had noticed Mick had dark circles under his eyes when he got up, so she'd let him add a cup of coffee. Now, he was on a caffeine high. He'd talked, de he'd talked Devon's ear off on the way to school, and in every class, his leg had bounced like a basketball dribbled by a pro. Whoa. There was another sports metaphor, and he didn't even like basketball. How about that? It was the third period of the day. They were in social studies. Not his favourite class, but he'd endure. As usual, Mick and Devon sat in the back of the classroom with the map-lined walls and the stern Mr Gentry looming over the kids in the front row. Mick noticed Kelsey was at the end of the third row, sitting next to a couple of football players. Kelsey was leaning back in his chair sideways, so he was looking at the kids on the left side of the room instead of at Mr Gentry up front. Mick watched as Kelsey's gaze landed on Devon's and Mick. Kelsey gave them a little half smile and nodded. Today, Mr Gentry said, we're talking about justice. He peered over his black thin, thin his black thick rimmed reading glasses, which generally hung on the end of his beaky nose. Mick thought Mr Gentry looked like an eagle. He had white hair and he usually wore brown. He had close set eyes like Devon did. And then there was that nose. What is justice? Mr Gentry asked. No one raised their hands. I know a rhetorical question when I hear one, Mick thought. Every culture has its own concept of justice, Mr Gentry continued. This concept is generally derived from many fields of study. Our system of justice, for example, comes from ethics, rational thought, the law, religion, and just general ideas about fairness. Underlying all of that, though, is usually some kind of gut feeling. Justice is, in most cases, intuitive. We know it when we feel it. He looked out over the class. So what does justice mean to you? This wasn't a rhetorical question. Mick didn't even think about raising his hand, though. Raising his hand in class would require that he have a brain transplant, or maybe get possessed or be infected by an alien some buoyant <laughs> I don't know what that is a symb symbiont Kelsey raised his hand and said justice balances the scales what does that mean Mr Gentry asked it removes the downside so the downside can't outweigh the upside interesting perspective Mr Gentry said Heather raised her hand Mick frowned Heather what was it about Heather that fascinated Devon so much? Sure, she was pretty, but she seemed pretty shallow to Mick, and she wasn't that pretty. There were much prettier girls in the class. He thought Devon was a little crazy about Heather, <laughs> though Devon seemed a little scrambled in general. Mick was beginning to think Devon had picked up a s yeah, that thing. There was something in his eyes, something not quite right. I think justice is payback, Heather said. Payback? Mr Gentry repeated. Yeah, Heather said. Like, someone disses you, so then you have to diss them back? Payback seems a little vague, Mr Gentry said. Perhaps it's too open to interpretation. What if payback goes too far? Henry shrugged. Henry? <laughs> Heather shrugged. Accidents happen. She laughed, and the class laughed with her. Devon laughed the loudest. Mick noticed Kelsey wasn't laughing. Mick wasn't laughing either. A shiver slithered down his spine. Devon didn't think that the day would ever end. Every class was slow and boring, with social studies winning the prize. 
except for Heather's hilarious accidents happen comment. The rest of the class had been drier than his mother's roast chicken, which was so dry it was hard to believe the bird had ever been alive at all. But finally, the day was over, and he and Mick were headed to the front of the school to meet Kelsey. The front of the school. How awesome was that? No more sneaking out the back to a clubhouse for losers. Mick trotted up to Devon, just inside the main doors of the school. Kids jostled past them, running for buses. For once, Devon didn't find the Friday afternoon buzz in the air annoying. He felt the buzz, too, like little electrical eels swimming over 